Kia ora, Year 12 and 13. Here's the second video of question two of last year's um, integration exam. So this is a step up from the last one. This is a merit question and then an excellence question. Um, the merit question is a differential equation one. Okay, in the town of Clarkville, the rate at which the population of the town changes at any instant is proportional to the population of the town at that instant. Now, as soon as you see that question, you should be feeling really, really happy because this is the classic type of DE that we have practiced heaps and heaps in class. If we want to write a differential equation that models this situation, we're going to let the population be P, okay, and T is equal to time, right? And we've given some information here. I'm going to do a new slide for this one. But at the start of 2000, the population was 12,000. And at the start of 2010, the population was up to 16,000. So we might make T, um, our initial time, be the year 2000, at the start of 2000. Okay, just watch your starts and ends. Okay, and we're asked to solve the DE that we work out in, in part one to figure out the population that the town will have at the start of 2025. So this is a completely predictable, doable question. So here comes the working on the next slide. Okay, so we can say this. dp by dt is equal to k times p. Right now we separate the variables. We get 1 over p dp is equal to k dt. Integrate both sides and we get the log of p is equal to kt plus c. Um, we want to get p as the subject, so we're going to put both sides. We're going to put e to the power of both sides. So we have e to the power of kt plus c, right? Just like we've done in class with radioactive decay, Newton's law of population, um, economic growth, and all of these pattern um, DEs. So here we get p is equal to e to the kt times e to the c. And we can write that as P0 times E to the KT. So now it's time to look at what information we've got in the question. So this is my general form. And we know that when T equals 0, P is equal to 12,000. So that means that my P0 will be 12,000. And we're going to have P is equal to 12,000 E to the KT. So the next thing I have to do is work out what is K. To do that, I use my next bit of information, which is that when t is 10, all right, so um, 10 years on, which I think is in 2010, um, we have a population in the town of 16,000. So I'm going to do that bit of substitution on a new slide now. Right, so we have 16,000 equals 12,000 times e to the k times 10. Right, so that gives me 16 over 12 equals e to the 10k. Take logs of both sides. First of all, let's simplify that. We get 4 thirds here. So the log of 4 thirds is equal to, doing this very slowly, the log of that. And this is just equal to 10k. So k is equal to the log of 4 thirds divided by 10 which works out to be 0 0.0288. OK, so one more slide needed, because I have to figure out what's the population going to be in 2025. So now I can write my equation as P equals this, 12,000 E to the 0 0.0288 T, and I need to take that equation and substitute in here, substitute 25 in there. Okay, so P is equal to 12,000 E to the 0.0288 T. When T equals 25, this gives me P is equal to 12,000 times E to the power of that, which works out to be 24,653. 
Okay, now I've cheated a little bit here. I haven't got my graphics calculator right next to me, so I've used the number off the schedule. Um, if you have rounded that not as much, you might get a slightly different number. You're working with a population, so you want to round it to the nearest person. Okay, so after, in 2025, population will be 24,653 people. Okay, on to the excellence question, which is on the next slide. Right, this is one where we've got to find the area under a curve. Um, we've got two graphs here. We've got y equals x, which is this one. And we've got this one here, which is y equals 2 over x minus 1. We can see a shaded area. Now, it's a bit different because we're told that that area is 4 units squared. We don't know that value, and we have to find k. So what are we going to do? Well, we look at where the two lines meet, and we figure that out. So we've got y equals x, and y equals 2 over x minus 1. So where are they the same? I get x times x minus 1 equals 2, so I get a wee quadratic. x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. So I look at that before I pop it in my calculator, and I see that it's going to factorise really nicely. I get x times x minus 2, let's see, minus 2 plus 1. Now there are two possible solutions. One of them is down here at negative 1, but the one we want is here at 2. Right, so now I've got my bottom limit of integration, and I know my top one is k. So if you look at that picture, I want the area under this curve, y equals 2 over x minus 1. So I know that that area is 4, so I get 4 is equal to um, the integral of this thing here between k and the bottom limit, which is 2. And it's just a slightly different way of thinking about the same old stuff. So here we have 4 is equal to, let's see, 2 log x minus 1, evaluated at k, minus that evaluated at 2. So we get 4 is equal to 2 log k minus 1. Now I can lose my absolute value signs now because I know that k is a positive number, So k, and k minus 1 is also positive. Right, take away 2 times log of one. And we know that that's equal to zero. So I have four equals two log of k minus one. Two is equal to the natural log of k minus one. E squared is equal to k minus one. E squared plus one is equal to k. Right, now I think that's a very nice answer. However, you could round it and get k is equal to 8.39. Now in the schedule they noted that that was marked correct and that was marked correct. Although on my reading I think they actually prefer you to go and get k equals 8.39. Okay, if you um, want some more questions like that you could uh, easily make yourself sum up right where the big idea is that we've, we're told the area and we're figuring out where to put the limits of integration.